ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತಭ್ಯಂ ಪರದೇ ಕಾಮಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತ ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಪುರವೇ ಸರ್ವೋಕಾಷೇವರೋಗಿಣೇ ನಮಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮಪತ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಗಾ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಗುಣಸ್ತು ಸಹವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾಬಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಶಾಂತಶಾಂತೇ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಐ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶೇರ್ ಮೈ ಪಿ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಫೈಲ್ ಆಫ್ ತತ್ವ ಬೋಧ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ದಿ ಪವರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ತತ್ವ ಬೋಧ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೆಫರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಿ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಫೈಲ್ ಆರ್ ಎನಿ ಬುಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲಶರೀರಾಭಿಮಿ ಜೀವನಾಮಕ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪ್ರತಿಬಿಂಬಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತ್ಯಾಸ್ಮಾಶ್ವರಿಣ್ಣತ್ವೀ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಸನ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಜೀವ ಇಚ್ಯತೆ ಮಾಯಾ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಸನ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಈಶ್ವರ ಇಚ್ಯತೆ ಮಾಯೋ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಮಾಯೋ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಮಾಯೋ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಸನ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಈಶ್ವರ ಇಚ್ಯತೆ ಸಂಧಿಸ್ಕೃತ Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. But Atma is there, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Evam upadhi bhedat. 
जीवेश्वर भेद दृष्टि जन्म मरणादिपसंसार निवर्तते जन्म मरणादिपिंडक्यम संभूत पिंड The individual stool or sheriram is called pinda, and the the total stool of prapancham that is called brahmanda. So when you say stool, I mean it is in, it includes sushma also. So that individual gesti is called pinda, and the total samasti is called brahmanda. So pinda brahmanda yoga. ईक्यम संभूत पिंड अंड ब्रह्मांड देर ईडेटिकल देर बोथ मेड ऑफ पंचभूत ओनली पिंड दट इज स्थूल शरीर ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल इज मेड ऑफ पंचभूत एंड सिमिलरली स्थूल प्रपंचम इज आलो मेड ऑफ पंचभूत ओनली All it has evolved out of that Maya Sagita Brahma, and from that Sukshma Bhuta came, from Sukshma Bhuta or Sukshma Bhutika, and from that Stula Bhuta and Stula Bhutika. So yeah, all the way it is identical only. Therefore, Ikyam Sambhutam Pinda Brahma and Yogo. You have to recollect what we have seen before. Since everything has come from Maya. तत आकाश संभूत आकाशाद्वायु तत इज फ्रम दट पंचमी पंचमी विभक्ति तत दट इज अव्यय वर् तत डि नोट फ्रम दट फ्रम वाट फ्रम ब्रह्मण सगित मया दट मया अंडर्स्टूड मया इज शक्ति आफ ब्रह्म दट फॉर ब्रह्मण सगित मया दट इज फ्रम ब्रह्म विच इज अलांग विथ मया बोत आर् inseparable and maya being mithya so what is there here is nothing but brahma therefore what is what about pinda and brahmanda pinda and brahmanda they are brahma therefore aikyam pinda is brahma and brahmanda is also brahma only therefore aikyam sambhutam therefore there is essentially this is essential identity oneness so you can arrive at this identical oneness when you dismiss that which doesn't exist independently maya is not separate from brahma therefore maya can be discounted dismissed therefore what remains is only brahma pinda is brahma brahmanda is also brahma therefore what is there is only brahma that is why we say what is there is only ishvara bhagavan alone is there since uh, due to identification with the upadhi i hope you understand what upadhi is upadhi is a technical term we will retain the word upadhi as upadhi there are many words which we don't want to translate so there are many sans- sanskritam words as i told before we will keep the word upadhi as upadhi technically upadhi it means <coughs> that which transfers its property that is called upadi that is upa samipe upa stands for samipe upa samipe stitva sriyan dharman anyatra adadati that which stands closer and transfers its attributes properties to the other that is called upadi technically upadi is defined So our, in our context, we can understand 
not only in our context, that is what Upadi is, this Shariram is Upadi. So because of this Upadi, the body mind sense complex, it's not only about Sula, it's also about Sukshma, all are Upadi only. Upadi is, understand Upadi is Mithya. It is all product of Maya only, therefore it is Mithya. And because of this Upadi, there is a notion that I am a Jiva. I am a Jiva and he is Ishvara, he is Paramatma. Agam Jivaha Saha Ishvaraha. So this Veda difference it arises on account of this Upadi. And we say Paramatma is the creator of this Jagat. And Jivatma, Agam Jivatma, Alpaha, Alpaha Jivatma, and if Paramatma is, is the Parma Purusha, he is the creator. It is a signer and he is the final dissolver of this jagat. Since there is a notion, it is only notional, since there is a notion that there is individual jiva, many jivas, and jagat is there for jiva to interact, and Ishvara is there, therefore, jiva, jagat, Ishvara, the Vedas are there. The notion of many, Jiva is there, Jagat is there, Ishvara is there. The notion of many, more than one, the notion of not one, it is there. Therefore, Shastram has to interfere and it has to say that it is not two. That it is not two. There is a Veda Buddhi. There is a Veda Buddhi. There is a notion of Difference. The division is there. Therefore, the Shastra has to say, Na Dvaitam. Na Dvaitam, not two. Two stands for, not only two, it's two stands for two as well as more than one. Anything more than one. Because there is a perception of many. So, therefore, Shastra has to say, Advaitam. Na Dvaitam. Advaitam means Na Dvaitam. There is no two. Shastra never say there is one. Because when, when what is there is only Atma, Ishvara, Bhagavan. And there is a notion that there are many. Dvaita Buddhi is there. The division is there. Therefore, Shastra will say Advaitam. Advaitam is a negative term. Na Dvaitam, Advaitam. And that is our Siddhanta also. Because that notion of that Jiva, Jagat, Ishvara, Veda is there and all are nothing but Brahma and that is the knowledge and that knowledge has to knock off the idea of the Veda, Buddhi. Therefore, Shastra has to say Advaitam, not Dvaitam, Advaitam. We don't say that there is only one. We say there is not two, non-duality. So why should we say not to? Because there is a notion of many. And that should be dismissed, negated. And for that Aikyam, the oneness is to be established. And the knowledge of Aikyam alone, it removes samsara, the sense of limitation, the sense of division, the sense of incompleteness. That goes away only when once that Aikyam is established. That is the, the intention of the Shastram. And Shastram goes step by step to establish that. For that Shastram adopts various prakriya and methods to arrive at this idea only. Therefore, the intention of the Shastra is only to establish the the tattvam, that Aikya tattvam, for that it, for that it uh, has its methodology, methodology of teaching. I'll give, uh, I'll explain this notion of many that is there, that is inherently in us, that, uh, that is there that I will explain with some example. Our best example is the data, data example. 
Suppose you go to a pot shop, pot shop. There are so many pots, gata. Not only pots, there are so many objects which are made of pots. Tumbler, plates, lids, jars. So many objects of pots, so many objects of objects made of clay of various sizes and shapes are available. Let us say. Now, there is a small pot, very small pot, let us assume. And he is our hero. A small pot, very small pot, which can hold only, let us say, only 100 milliliter of water, let us say. And there is a huge pot, very huge in size. Now, this small pot, it sees all the objects and also the huge pot. This small pot is the, the subject. Is the subject, and with respect to the small pot, all the pots and all the other other items, they're all objects. So one subject and many objects. So this subject has now as the notion of many, because there are so many objects made of clay is there, tumbler, plate, lid, and also a huge pot is there. So there is a notion of there is a division, div notional division of many. That is itself and the other. One subject and there are so many objects. The notion of division, subject object division, that is called Dvaitam. And when this small part, it sees a huge part, it's so huge in size, it offers namaskara, it offers namaskara and prayers. This small pot is a jivatma, and the big pot, it is the paramatma, let us say. Now this jivatma pot, it is limited, and it wants to be unlimited. It wants to be free, freedom. And this jivatma pot joins with the paramatma pot. How to join now? And that joining is called Yoga. The word yoga. The word yoga it is derived from the dhatu yuj yojane. Dhatu is yuj dhatu. Yuj means to join. From the word yuj yoga yoga comes. You can uh, see from the dhatu yu yuj yu becomes that u becomes o yo that guna happens yo and jakara becoming jakara. If you remember the Sanskrit rule. That you becomes who. So from the huge that only you get the word yoga. Because the datu artha, the meaning of the datu is to join, to merge, yojana. There is an idea that the jivatma should join, the jivatma should merge, should become one with the paramatma. Because there is a division, notional division, it wants to join. But for the small part, it is not a notional division, it is a real division. Therefore, it wants to join and that is called yoga. Now, how to join? Will the small part has to be you know, smashed into back to the lump of clay and just stick it on the big part? No, that is not joining. And many other philosophers, they have this idea that Jivatma has to become one with Paramatma. It has to go and merge with the Paramatma. So it means what? Now the division is there, the division has to go. For the division to go, the Jivatma should join, should become one, should go and merge with the Paramatma. Let me ask you one thing. If Jivatma is really separate from Paramatma, if the division is really Satyam, then how can Jivatma join? How can Jivatma merge with the Paramatma? If the Veda is Satyam, then there is no possibility of joining with the Paramatma. 
even if it merges with Paramatma, let us say, then there is a possibility of separation. Because joining and merging is an action, it's a karma. And before joining, how did the separation come? That question also will come. So Jivatma has to join with the Paramatma. If it has to join, it means the division is real now. So it has to join. If it joins with the Paramatma, then what is the guarantee that Jivatma again will not become separate from the Paramatma? Therefore, there is no joining business. There is no merging business here. No fusion is required between Jivatma and Paramatma. Because that division is only notional, it is not Satyam. If it is Satyam, then there is no possibility of merging Jivatma and Paramatma. And this small part, which is the Jivatma, is nothing but, really speaking, it is nothing but clay, this Brit, Brit Panda. Pinda. The huge part Paramatma, that is also nothing but clay only. So, they are essentially clay. And this essential identity is in terms of being the clay. Clay is the Satyam. And already that identity is there in terms of being clay. Only the sizes are different. Only the forms are different, the shapes are different, and forms are mithya. The forms are mithya and they are upadhi. Upadhis are mithya. These upadhis have got certain utility in the empirical world. In the Vyavagarika, it has certain utility. That is different. That, that doesn't change the real na nature of the small pot and the big pot. Both are clay essentially. When they are clay essentially, when they are already one in terms of being clay, then where is the question of joining? Merging, becoming uh, Jivatma, becoming Paramatma. Already Jivatma, it is. It is what it is. There is no question of becoming, becoming Paramatma or joining with Paramatma. That becoming is samsara. That is a problem. So the difference between them is only in terms of upadhi. And you cannot establish that Aikyam, that oneness in terms of upadhi. Upadis are real. For empirical trans uh, transaction, Upadis are real. Let it be. You don't have to negate Upadi also. Because Upadi is Mithya. Therefore, this small part, to become free, what it has to do? It has to gain the knowledge that it is not different from the big part. They are already one. The small part now, it has to be taught its real nature, its Swarupam. And that, it is not different from the big part. When this small part gains this Jnanam, then it becomes free, Muktaha. Therefore, now you tell me whether the small part has to gain freedom or is, is it already free? That freedom is it already, it's a Siddha Vastu or it is a Sadhya Vastu. It is to be achieved or already it is there. Small part already being clay, it has nothing, it has, there is no becoming. It doesn't need to become clay, already it is clay. The big part is also clay. Therefore, already Aikyam is there, that identity is there. Therefore, freedom is already gained. Freedom is already there. Only that jiva, that small pot, jivatma has to discover that it is essentially one in nature with the, with the pot, which is the paramatma. So that gaining, that gaining that knowledge, that alone makes it, makes it free. It gives freedom. Therefore, only ajnanam, the, the ajnanam is the cause of samsara. Ajnanam prevents from enjoying the freedom. And that Ajnanam, that Avidya is the Upadhi, which makes the a individual a miserable Jeeva. This Vidya Upadhi conditions the Atma as though Jeevatma. Upadhi cannot condition Atma, but as though, that is why we use the word as though, Eva. 
if it really conditions then it's a then then it's a jivatma then it can it is uh, jivatma cannot become free it is as though iba nitya upadi as though conditions the atma and that becomes jivatma therefore we say avidya upadi san atma jivaha iti uchyate that is avidya agyanam avidya is agyanam agyanat the atma that is chaitanyam chaitanya atma jivaha iti uchyate because of avidya that is ignorance the error that is upadi because of that it becomes a jiva the chaitanya atma it is limitless it is it becomes jiva or it is called a jiva because of this ignorance this error because of agyanam only it takes the physical body the mind the senses as one self and that error that mistake is called avidya agyanam that mistaken the idea that notion is called avidya agyanam that is the upadi and for paramatma maya is the upadi paramatma doesn't have avidya paramatma as maya is the upadi if paramatma has avidya then he cannot be paramatma therefore there is no avidya in paramatma paramatma is sarvajna sarvam janati iti sarvajna is all knowledge that is why i said in the last class paramatma keeps maya under control it is only a view point okay that maya cannot take paramatma para right maya to prakritim vidyam mayinam to maheshwaram that is maya is the upadi of brahma that is paramatma ishvara and the builder of maya is maheshwara parameshwara therefore maya cannot condition brahma like avidya puts jiva for a right therefore so this is a prakriya okay this this is a yat prakriya it's a method by which the shastra presents the idea of jiva and ishvara both have got upadi jiva as the avidya as the upadi and ishvara as the maya as the upadi jiva under the sway of avidya and and par ishvara maya is the vibhuti chalila whether it is avidya or maya they are upadi only therefore mitya upadi is mitya and therefore it can be dismissed so dismissing the upadi and recognizing the the identity that is called aikyam so therefore the aikyam that freedom is possible only in terms of gaining knowledge jnana jnanam jnana prapti therefore we say moksha is possible it's only in terms of gaining jnanam jnanena eva moksha natu karmana न कर्मना न प्रजया धने न त्यागे नैके अमृतत्वमानशुः सो नॉट बाय कर्मा और नॉट बाय प्रोजेनी और नॉट बाय वेल्थ यू कैन गेन मोक्षा मोक्षा इज पॉसिबल ओनली बाय ज्ञानम ज्ञानेन एव मोक्षः अन परज्ञानम व्हाट वन हैज टू डू वन हैज टू स्टडी द शास्त्रम नॉट बाय वन सेल्फ वन हैज टू स्टडी द शास्त्रम फ्रॉम द गुरु and the vakyam and the words of the guru and the shastram are not different therefore that gives knowledge and knowledge gives freedom because freedom is already gained and because of agyanam we are in samsara and for the agyanam to go we have to bring gnanam and gnanam is possible by the words of the shastram therefore gnanena moksha na tu karmana this is a big thing because there are there's so many ideas are there in the in the spiritual world they talk about different types of yoga and yoga itself is uh, wrongly understood the so yoga they say it means to yoga to connect so jiva to be, to to be connected with the paramatma and for that day they teach many yoga 
so many yogas have come but really there is only there are only two yogas one is jnana yoga other one is karma yoga karma yoga means that kar, that is that gita talks about that is a lifestyle ultimately that moksha is possible only jnana karma yoga also it, it also implies that jnana karma yoga is a lifestyle you don't have to take sanyasa you can lead a normal life life of a householder do certain karma and by that and also learn shastram shastram pata gain knowledge do your karma you don't have to take up take sanyasa so the two lifestyles are prescribed by gita itself jnana yogena sankhyanam karma yogena yoginam iti that's the lifestyle so the jnana is possible only that moksha is possible only by jnana therefore by no action you can gain freedom it also can be established logically very simple what is achieved through karma will go away in time because karma being limited how can the limited karma get you the unlimited moksha the freedom action is limited therefore the result of action also should be limited the shastram prescribes various rituals karma like uh, that uh, jyotish toma yagna and all by doing that you go to swarga but swarga it is not uh, the permanent uh, you know heaven permanent place as long as you have punya in your account you can enjoy you can exhaust your punya in swarga you can encash your punya in swarga and once it is over you will be drop just from swarga down below therefore action cannot any karma cannot give you that punatvam that freedom if punatvam already should be there it has to be discovered for that jnana is required if you are already satchit atma then no action is required it is not possible to achieve what is what has been already achieved by action you are already that jagat karanam brahma agam asmi i am the cause of this jagat karana that brahma you need to know only that that's all that is all that is what our shastram does in the form of upadesha teaching but you may have some difficulty in understanding and accepting the fact how can i be jagat karanam brahma how can i be the cause of this jagat karanam brahma i feel so limited i am conditioned that is all because of our uh, our orientation that is because of the the avidya that beginning beginningless avidya anadi avidya we are so identified with our body mind sense complex that it becomes very difficult when shastram says jagat karanam brahma tat tvam asi it is very difficult to digest this 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 knowledge but that is what the reality is for that shastram is pramana but why it is difficult to, to accept to understand this jagat karanam brahma agamasmi that i am the cause of this jagat which is brahma that brahma is myself because there is a veda buddhi the there is an appreciation of difference between me and the jagat between me and the ishvara between jiva and jiva that becomes then it becomes difficult to accept to to accept the fact even in the empirical world we have this uh, this division of course in the empirical world division will be there i i will try to give an empirical example to to get convinced of this fact that may not be a good example but uh, still i will try in the empirical in the empirical world there is difference is there in spite of difference there is that that i came that oneness is there that identity is there for example that is i am sharan i am sharan i am a human being similarly bill gates is there it's another person another human being both are human beings there is no doubt about it so basically we are the same person same same person in the sense we are human beings we belong to the same species there are so many species in the world and we both belong to the same species that is called human being but our upadis are different our body mind the senses are different attributes are different not only that that the status 
what Bill Gates has is different from what I what I have. And Bill Gates has, is, a, is a millionaire. With the money what he has, he can buy a huge island. Whereas with what I have, I cannot even buy a small flat, a single bedroom. So at the empirical level, we appreciate the difference between the two more than at the upadi level. But we know essentially both are basically human. We both enjoy the privilege of human beings. There is no difference in that. In spite of the, there are differences, there is yeah, a, there is an identity. Similarly, Jivatma and Paramatma, they are essentially Chaitanya only. They are consciousness. So the difference at the Upadhi level, it, it cannot negate the truth at the Paramarthika level. At the Absolute level, it cannot negate the truth, both being Chaitanya, Atma. That is why in the, in the uh, definition of Jiva and Ishvara, that word Atma is used. Atma is Chaitanya. Avidya Upadhi San Atma Jiva Iti Ujjate. Maya Upadhi is an Atma Ishwaraha Iti Ujjate. That Atma is the supply. It will be there in the uh, definition. Both are Atma only. Upadhi Dedhat Jiva Ishwara Deda. That is what our Shastram talks about. If you understand this, the fact that Jiveshwara, Jiveshwara Yogo Vedaha Nasti Aikyam Sambhutam then you don't have to listen to anything. Shastram has nothing more to teach. This is Aikyam. Pinda Brahma and the Yoga Aikyam. That is what the Tatvaryam of the Shastra. If that is understood, then Shastram has done its job. Then why do why should we study so many Upanishads and Prakrana, Prakrana and other Granthas? There are so many Granthas are the Prakrana Grantha, Siddhi Grantha. Why should we study? Upanishads, or for that matter, any Grantha, it talks about the same thing by adopting different prakriya. That listening to many Upanishads or studying the text written by the great Acharyas, what it does is, it helps us in entrenching the knowledge which has been gained. And that is called Nididhyasana. That is called Nididhyasana. That Shravanam also, it has another advantage also, Shravanam. Shravanam also helps to cultivate the Adhigarit form. Also, it also helps to cultivate the, the Adhigarit form. Wherever there is a lack in the qualities to become a, the Adhigari for pursuing Vedanta, that Shravanam fills it up. And Shravanam, it facilitates Jnana Nishta. Therefore, Swami used to say in our, in, the, in our class, in the beginning of the course, he says, there is no difference between you and the Ishvara. Aikyam is there. Aham Brahma Asmi. This is what the teaching is. At the beginning of the course, I will say this. And at the end of the course, after three, three and a half years or four years, the same thing I will say. There is no difference in the teaching. Only one small sentence is taken up, and that is what it is four years. In fact, four years is a short term. This teaching is really, it is done for 12 years or more than that. And people study for years and years only to understand this fact, Agam Brahma Asmi. And you may say that you understand, but still there is a problem when it comes to practice. Yes, you may have problem. We may say that when we get into the activities, when we deal with the, the external world, when you trans, do transaction with the world, you find difficult in applying this knowledge. Yes, that is it's true. That is why continuous shravanam is required. Whatever activity you may engage in, but keep up the, the habit of listening to the shastram. Till this jnanam is deeply entrenched and it becomes spontaneous, till then we have to do this Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasam. By Shravanam you gain knowledge, and all the obstacles are taken care by Mananam, and Nishta in the knowledge, that Jnanam, it is done by Nididhyasam. 
because there are obstacles and viparita bhavana, we need manana and nididhyasana. Otherwise, if you are a fully qualified person, the purna adhikaritvam is dead and shravanam itself is sufficient. The moment you hear the upadesha from the teacher, the jnana has to take place. Aham karta, aham bhokta, it is so strong in us. Therefore, all the karakas, all the other factors of action, it come into picture. Agam karta, agam bhokta is there. When that is there, then karma will come, karana also will come, sampradana will come, apadana, adhikarana, all the other karakas, all the other karakas also will come. I hope you understand what is karaka is. When you say karta, agam karta, then karma has to be there. Then karma is then karana also will be there. All the karakas will come. But when you understand that everything here, it is Brahma, it is Ishvara, then all the karakas, they resolve into Atma. And Atma is a very subject. What exists is only Atma. And Atma is a very subject. Into that, all the karakas resolve. Because what is there is only the Atma, the very subject, and there are no objects at all. Only when there are so many objects, then the jiva has a problem to encounter the object. It is it is in fear. It has to encounter because there are so many objects are there and the poor jiva is the only subject. When you gain jnanam, all the karakas, they resolve, resolve into atma. And what exists is only atma. And sarvam agameva, sarvam being brahma, they are not different from me. And when I see myself in all beings, then what is to be done? What action is required? For whom to be done? On what to be done? Where to be done? So all the karakas, they resolve into the Atma. And nothing is away from Atma, not separate from Atma, the very subject. Therefore, understand being a Karta is not the problem. Kartritvam is a problem. It can be a Karta. It can be a bhokta, but this kartrutvam and bhoktrutvam attributed to atma, that is a problem and that is the samsara. The status of atma being a karta is a problem. Kartrutvam is mitya, jivatvam is mitya. Therefore, Shastram says, tat from asi, tat from asi, that is the Mahavakyam. Great equation. Tatu Tvam Asi. If you take these three words, that three words combining make one Vakya, that is called a Magha Vakya. In fact, there are so many Magha Vakyas are there. They say four Magha Vakyas. It's not only four, there are many Magha Vakyas. This Tatu Tvam Asi, if you take this simple, this not simple, this, the sentence is simple, but it's a Magha Vakya. It's a great equation. Tat is Pratama Vibhakti, Tvam is also in Pratama Vibhakti, Asi is the, the Kriyapadam. So, Tat Tvam Asi, when you say, you are that, that you, that Tvam, it stands for Jivatma. And Tat, that stands for Paramatma. So, the Tvam Pada, that Tvam, that Pada, that word, it doesn't stand for Stula Sharidam or Sukshma Sharidam. If you take it as the upadi, then there is differences there. We, then you cannot say tatutvam asi. Tatutvam na asi, in fact. If you take, we can take into consideration the upadi, they are not equal. Therefore, tvampada doesn't stand for the stula sariram or the sukshma sariram. It refers to the atma, pratyagatma, the chaitanya. Stula and sukshma, they are mitya. So, therefore, they are dismissed. Similarly, tatpada, it is Prachit Ananda Brahma, the Chaitanya. We have to discount even the Maya Upadi. So, dismissing the, the Upadi difference, dismissing the Jivatvam and the Ishwaratvam, this equation, it establishes the fact that the Tvam is at the level of Chaitanya. At the level of consciousness, that the Tvam Asi. The wave and the ocean, they are the same. The form of wave 
and the form of ocean that the body they are dismissed and essentially essential oneness between the wave and the ocean both being h2o water that is established in the same way here also dismissing the upadi that individual that jivatma that pinda and the total that is the paramatma brahmanda between the two aikyam sambhutam pinda brahmanda yogo aikyam sambhutam aikyam is established and this thula sharira abhimani atma jiva namakam brahma pratibimbam bhavati sayeva jivah prakritya svasmat ishvaram bhinnatvena janati this all this the small pot what i told in the example the small pot which is parichinnam parichinnam which is limited because of upadi that is pratibimbam the big big pot the paramatma is the bimbam the parichinna jivatma is the pratibimbam and the big pot is the bimbam and upadi that forms being nitya not knowing that that upadi is a nitya jivah prakritya svasmat ishvaram bhinnatvena janati and that is a problem that jiva the because of ignorance it takes itself to be different from ishvara so parichinna gata that is small that small pot that is the pratibimbam and the bimba the big pot between the two there is no difference but the small pot it thinks itself to be different from the big pot so smart bhinnatvena janati and that is samsara that is a problem in the last class i remember i told this pratibimba model it has got certain limitations therefore it has to be carefully understood this example of pot and clay is even i think it is enough to understand the model you don't have to confuse yourself with the uh, the terms like reflection reflection media because the word pratibimba is uh, bim, pratibimba is reflection bimba and all these things you don't have to confuse with this uh, term understand that small pot the jivatma is the pratibimba and the big pot the paramatma is the bimba that is the original image and the reflection is jivatma which is pratibimba so bimba and pratibimba pratibimba is there because of upadi and it can be dismissed because it has no satyatvam therefore atma jiva namakam brahma pratibimbam bhavati very simple that brahma pratibimba jiva is pinda that is the individual and binda brahma is brahmanda which is brahma ayoga madhye aikyam sambhutam between the two there is an essential identity oneness and we know the definition of ishvara and jiva avidya upadisan atma jiva ha iti uchyate maya upadisan atma ishvara ha uchyate एवं उपाधि भेदा जीवेश्वर भेद सृष्टि यहां जन्म मरणादि रूप संसार निवर्तते वेरी सिंपल सेंटेंस एस लॉन्ग एस दिस डिविशन दिस भेद दृष्टि डिविशन ऑफ डिफरेंस एस लॉन्ग एस दिस डिविशन ऑफ डिफरेंस यहां जीव जीवेश्वर भेद सृष्टि तिष्टति वर्तते as long as this vision of difference between jiva and ishvara it is there because of what because of upadi upadi bhedat so long tavat paryantam janma marana tavat paryantam samsaraha na nivartate till then so long that samsara will not go away and samsara is is defined janma maranaadi roopa samsaraha samsara which is in the form of janma birth and marana death adi means you have to bring all the things sukha dukkha all the thing which is between a janma and a marana and also from marana to janma also because after marana you either you go to swarga or naraka or you take a whatever happens between the two that also adi padarth you have to bring all that in between the two between janma and marana we know that life full of experiences and between marana and another janma that also would be 
That is also nothing but samsara. So, Janma Maranadi Rupa Samsaraha Nya Nivartate Tavat Pariyantam Nya Nivartate Yavat Pariyantam Upadhi Veda Dishtihi Vartate Tavat Pariyantam So, so yeah, therefore, this is this samsara, it is because of avidya. So, yavat pariyantam veda drishtigi. Veda drishtigi is vedasya drishtigi, veda drishtigi. That is that, that division. That, that drishti is a vision. A vision of difference. Yavat pariyantam veda drishtigi, vedasya drishtigi. The vision of differences is there. Tavat pariyantam samsara ha na Samsara will not go away from the Ishvara. Ishvara is not in samsara. The problem is only with the jiva. Therefore, Samsara will not leave Jiva. Jiva will be in Samsara. Due to what? Due to Vidya Upadhi. Vidya is the Upadhi of Ishvara. And therefore, as long as this Vidya Upadhi goes away, it took so long that Jiva will be in Samsara. So, Drishti means perception. Drishti, perception or the, the vision. So, Taking myself to be really separate from Ishvara, that is Veda, even though it is due to Upadi, and Upadi being Mithya, but for me, the poor Jivatma, it is real, therefore, Veda Drishti. And this Veda Drishti is because of not understanding that what is there is only one Satya Vastu, which is Brahma, and there is no other thing than Brahma, that Lack of understanding is there, that is the cause of samsara. And therefore, the Jiva Swarupa, the essential nature of Jiva is Brahma, the consciousness. And Jiva is Aparichinna. It is, it is, it is essentially one with Ishvara. And that is the meaning of the word, meaning of the Vakya, that is from See. So, this is what is Aikya Jnanam. And this Aikya Jnanam will not, be, will not be there as long as this Veda Drishti is there and Veda Drishti is Samsara. And Samsara is qualified by the word Janma Marana Virupa Samsara. So, Janma Dukkha Dara Jara Vyari Dukkha Dosha Anudasam. It comes in Gita. So, all this, this you can take into uh, this uh, samsara. That is why we say that Vairagya is very important. Vairagya is one of the important qualities mentioned as part of Sadhana Chatushtaya. That Vairagya should be there. Because one should have the, the Anudarshanam as the as a look into the, the limitations of the samsara. Jinnam, Mrityu, Jaravyari, Dukkha, Dosha, Anudarshanam. And this kind of samsara will be there as long as this Maya Avidya Upadi is there. As long as it is there, you will be under the spell of Maya. So, and this samsara, which is, which is born of Avidya, Ajnana, it is, all, it is governed by the law of karma. Because of karma alone, one is born. What is the karanam for one's birth? Janma karanam kim karma. And Ishvara in the form of the order, in the form of law, law of karma, it gives a new shariram to the jiva to exhaust the karma. And it, the jiva will be there for a certain time till the karma is exhausted and, and, and then it dies away. That is how the whole jagat is. So, you may ask why not Ishvara gives only one body, one body to exhaust all the karma and uh, done with it, why should give new new bodies, why there is should be a janma and again marana, again janma to exhaust our karma and marana, why it is, because our karmas are manifold, we cannot exhaust all types of karma in one body, we have to take different bodies and fortunately we have taken the human body in this janma and we have the karma to take any, all possible bodies. And therefore, the karma to be exhausted and therefore, we have to take that uh, birth. Again, we are born. So, we need varieties of bodies to exhaust our the, the karma. This is how the law of karma is. And to escape from this, 
this samsara, what is needed is this, this, this jnanam. This aikya jnanam is required and that is the only means to become free. Therefore, if one wants to be free, to be free from this sense of limitation of becoming, then one has to be a mumukshu, not a bubukshu. Bubukshu is bhukti micha, one who wants to enjoy the world, the jagat, which is full of various objects and things which are available for his enjoyment. Not only this jagat, even this swarga that you want to enjoy, then you are a bubukshu. Bhukti micha, bubuksha, and bhukti ichihu bubukshu. But when you understand the limitations and become a, and want to become free, mumukshu, then, then the shastram will unfold the knowledge, tatu, from asi. By that vakya, it establishes that you are already one with the Ishvara and that liberates you. Tasmat karanat na jiveshvara yogo veda buddhihi svikarya. Svikarya, svikarya, that is the next sentence. Therefore, tasmat karanat jive, jiva ishvara yogo veda buddhihi na svikarya. Therefore, the difference between jiva and ishvara should not be accepted. Why? Because it is not real. There is no satyatvam in the veda buddhihi. Therefore, nasvikarya and become a mukta. That is what the, the Shastram teaches. We will stop here and continue with the, the next sentence in the, the next class. Okay. Om Poor Nasya poor Namada, your poor Neva, Mr. Bay. Oh, Thank you, Thank you.